What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the crack pack series. I hope you all are doing very, very well. I'm doing fantastic. Today, we're opening up a pack of Champions of Kamigawa, a really, really great set, a lot of fun stuff in this. It was a little bit polarizing. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people loved it. The flavor's great. Playability, not so much. It's not the best in the world. Uh, but that being said, there are still some really, really nice cards in it uh, that hopefully we will get to open as we go along. Uh, quick disclosure. There uh, are some crazy names in this set. I'll just go ahead and say some of the names in this one are a little bit uh, difficult to pronounce, uh, to put it lightly. So if I do mispronounce some things, I do apologize, but I'll do the best I can. Our first card here is Blessed Breath. Uh, it's an instant arcane spell, which is relevant for only one white. Uh, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. And then you can splice onto arcane for only one white. So as you play an arcane spell, you can reveal this card from your hand and pay its splice cost. And then if you do, uh, you add this effect to whatever spell you're already playing. And then this card actually stays in your hands. So you don't necessarily have to use it right away. You can get the effect, but then also use it again. So kind of like getting extra uses out of a singular card, which is a really, really cool ability. In this case, not super exciting though. Only giving protection from the color of your choice is nice in very corner case circumstances. It's nice to be able to protect your stuff, but it's better to be proactive in limited, uh, particularly in draft. You really want to be playing creatures and be building up your board. Protecting stuff is not necessarily a bad way to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there could be a lot more powerful things that you could be doing, and this just isn't high up on that list. So not a favorite card of mine for sure. Uh, Scuttling Death is a 4-2 for 4 and a black. Sacrifice it, and target creature gets minus, minus 1, minus 1 until the end of the turn. And then it has Soul Shift 4, so whenever it's put into a graveyard from play, you can return target spirit card with converted mana cost 4 or less from your graveyard to your hand. We'll probably see Soul Shift on a number of cards in this set. Uh, it's a very, very good mechanic in my opinion. It just gives you a lot of recursion with all these spirits, and being in that spirit deck is really, really great for this. Uh, this card in particular is fine. I don't find it amazing. Uh, Soul Shift 4 does hit a lot of spirits, though, so being able to bring something back is nice, and then being able to trigger it at any time by sacrificing this is also kind of nice. So there are some random synergies and upsides to it, but at the end of the day, you're getting a 4-2 for 5. Not great, uh, but it can maybe pick off something or stack damage on top of this ability to maybe kill off a creature. In that instance, it's kind of good. So it's nice to have, but it's not necessarily a first pickable card. Regardless, it is better than Blessed Breath for sure. Oops. Uh, <clears throat> Hearth Kami uh, is a 2-1 for one and a red uh, as spirit as well. You can pay X and sacrifice it and destroy target artifact with convert converted mana cost X. Uh, this is just a solid 2-drop. It's not amazing by any means. It's a 2-1 for 2, so a little bit low on the toughness. However, it does make up for it with having an ability that does uh, destroy artifacts, which are, is not the most amazing thing, uh, but it will have some random upside. And just to have this as like a toolbox card within your deck just already uh, is a really great way to go out. It's a great way to have a 2-drop be a little bit more relevant against random matchups. And regardless, you're still getting a 2-1 for 2, so it's fine. Uh, it's not amazing. I would still take the Scuttling Death probably over it, uh, but it's not a bad 2-drop for sure. Uh, Saratami Cloud Skater uh, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has flying, and then you can pay 2 of any color and return a land you control to its owner's hand. You draw a card, and then you discard a card. So... Uh, I am okay with this, but I don't love it. It's a little bit of a high cost uh, for an ability like that. And setting yourself back a land in limited in particular is really, really difficult. Now, obviously, late game, it gives you a little bit more draw engine, uh, and it's nice to be able to do that. Technically, you can trigger it multiple times. You tap the lands, bounce back the land, one of the lands that you just used uh, for the ability, and then you get to loot. And that's nice, but... You don't want to set yourself back too many lands in limited because you want to be able to get to your bombs. And again, most games are one on board 
And so that it's not going to help you play your cards out is basically what I'm saying. It does help you dig through your deck, though, which is nice. I still think I'd rather have the Scuttling Death, but it's not a terrible card. At the very worst, it's a 1-1 flyer for two, which isn't amazing, but it is evasive. So there's that random upside there. <clears throat> Uh, Orochi Sustainer is a 1-2 for 1 and a green. You can tap it for 1 green mana, so it basically is a mana, it's a regular mana dork. However, at 2 mana, 2 mana mana dorks tend to be a significant amount worse than 1 mana mana dorks. It's really nice to be able to ramp up to turn 3 after just turn 1, uh, but ramping up to turn 4 is still good, obviously, but it's not quite as great as ramping up that early on that turn 1. So, if you're in a green ramp deck, this is a great card to have. You'll definitely want it, but it's not really the payoff card. It's the one that helps you get there. So I'd rather have maybe some of the payoffs uh, a little bit sooner and then maybe pick this up since it's a common, be able to hopefully wheel one uh, or two, maybe find one in another pack. So not something I'm interested in first picking, but not a bad card. Mana dorks in general are pretty good no matter what. Uh, Distress uh, is a sorcery for two black. Target player reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Uh, generally, cards like this are trading up in value in Limited uh, when you get to pick the card, and especially when there's not very many restrictions on the card, it's a really, really nice tool to have because you can do one of two things. One, you could just pick the strongest card, uh, get rid of their bomb, make sure that they're not going to have much late game in their opening hand or however, whenever you get to actually play this card, or... Uh, especially in the early turns of the game, if you can get this out on turn two, especially, <coughs> excuse me, what's really nice is to be able to take away their next, uh, their next play, whatever that happens to be, uh, along the curve. So say you play this on turn two, they maybe were on the play, so they're about to go into their turn three, and they have a three drop, a five drop, and a six drop. Well, if you take that three drop, they're going to be off of their game plan for at least a turn, probably two, because they don't have a three or a four drop now. And that just gives you two, not free turns by any means, because obviously you don't know what they're going to draw, but it gives you a really good shot at getting some, some really good early game advantage. And that's really, really nice. I like that quite a lot. I don't know if it's better than the Scuttling Death. Again, I prioritize creatures a little bit heavily uh, in draft in particular, and especially one that uh, uh, that enables, excuse me, recursion like the Soul Shift 4 mechanic there. Pretty important in my opinion. I don't know which is better. I'm going to keep them together for now and we'll see what we get. <clears throat> uh, Ethereal Haze is an instant arcane spell for one white. Prevent all damage that would be dealt by creatures this turn. I've talked about fog effects many, many times. We're almost at episode 300 here, so you're probably getting tired of hearing it, but cards like this, very much a trap for new players. They're not very good. You can turbo fog and constructed when you have a, a pre-built game plan to get to, but if you don't have that already built in, you're definitely not getting your money's worth for these uh, fog effects, these haze effects, things like that. It's just not worth it. Uh, you prevent damage for a turn. That's great, but if you're playing a card like this, you're probably in the losing position, and stalling for a turn probably isn't going to get you anywhere. So this is not the kind of card you want to be drawing out of your deck when you're in a losing position. It just isn't. So definitely not a pick in my opinion. Uh, Crushing Pain is one and a red for an instant arcane spell as well. Uh, it deals six damage to target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Uh, the key here is that it has to be dealt damage already. Um, and I like it, but it's kind of very conditional. It's not my favorite. Uh, I'd rather have something that just deals maybe three damage, but doesn't have the condition uh, of having to have already been dealt damage this turn. So not my favorite removal spell. It is removal, and you should definitely value it as such, but it's a little bit more conditional than just, than just straight up removal. So for that reason, it's not as high as a pick for me. Uh, it is efficient, and it is an arcane spell, which means it will have that synergy with splice, uh, uh, the splice mechanic, but in general, not as exciting as it definitely could be. <clears throat> uh, Wandering Ones is a 1-1 vanilla creature for one blue. Uh, this is just a bad card. <laughs> um, there's no real reason to play a card like this. It's a one drop. I'd rather not have a one drop in my deck probably than play something that just doesn't do anything. Uh, and so this, 
yes, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, but it's not doing anything. It's technically even statted, but it, it doesn't have an ability. It doesn't have anything that's really all that relevant. And so even on turn 2, as early as turn 2, maybe even turn 1, it'll just get outclassed by something and then be completely worthless except for being a chump blocker. And so I don't like this at all. It is a spirit. There are synergies there, obviously. If there's a Soul Shift 1 mechanic that comes up, you can pull this back and... You know, that's cool, but it's still just a 1-1. One, one. It's just not a very good card. Uh, Kitsune Riftwalker, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 2-1 for 1 and 2 white. Uh, it has protection from spirits and from arcane. So this is actually pretty solid as a 3-drop solely because of that protection. There are so many spirits, so many arcane spells in this set. That's obviously the big focus. Uh, being able to have a card that is just protected against all of that is really, really good. However against a deck where they're not running spirits or arcane spells which again they're probably running some semblance of them but not maybe maybe that's not their whole strategy this doesn't it's not very good it's a two one for three uh, not only that but you have to have two white which makes it a little bit more difficult if you're in a two or three color strategy uh, to actually play it out so for that reason it's not a super exciting card if anything it's an okay, maybe curve consideration card, uh, but I would regulate it even more maybe and say it's a sideboard card. That might be a little incorrect, but regardless, I don't think it's as high as a pick as some of the other cards that we've got. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Ronan Houndmaster is a 2 2 for 2 and a red. It has haste, uh, so it can swing in right away, and it has Bushido 1. So when this blocks or becomes blocked, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Now, this is my kind of creature for limited. It's very, very aggressive, uh, encourages, encourages you to be attacking, uh, which you can do right away because of that haste, and it has the added upside of being either difficult to block or difficult to kind of attack around uh, because it has that Bushido 1, so it, it's actually going to pump itself up anytime it's either blocked or becomes blocked. So, decentivizes the opponent to want to block it, uh, and then if you leave it up, it decentivizes the attacker the, or the opponent, excuse me, to want to attack you depending on what's on board. So lots of really good upside here. Uh, it's not an amazing creature by any means, but it is still quite good. And I think so far it's probably the best pick. Uh, it's just a really, really aggressive card. And that's exactly what you want in limited. Uh, Samurai of the Pale Curtain uh, is a 2-2 two -two for 2 white. It has Boshido 1, so same mechanic we just saw. And then if a permanent would be put into the graveyard, remove it from the game instead. So this is actually really, really solid because of Soul Shift. Uh, Soul Shift is a very, very powerful mechanic against a spirit deck. This is going to do wonders. Uh, it just keeps them from hitting the graveyard, which means they're not going to be able to trigger that. Uh, so that value is not going to be there. And uh, honestly, a lot of the Soul Shift cards, while they're good because they have Soul Shift, are really, really not as great without it. We saw that Scuttling Death dies to this just because it only has two toughness, but you're trading up with something like this. So it's it's actually really, really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, I actually think it's so far the best pick. Uh, it's a very aggressive card in that it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 as well with that Bushido 1. And it has just that random upside with that graveyard recursion. Normally, I wouldn't value that quite as highly, but again, with Soul Shift, I think you kind of have to. Uh, this is an interesting card. So uh, these flip cards kind of are really, really interesting. There was a few of them in this set, but b uh, b Bushy, b Bushy Tenderfoot, <laughs> I might be saying that correct incorrectly, I'm sorry, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. When a creature is dealt damage by the Tenderfoot, this turn uh, is put into the graveyard, you flip it. So anytime it deals damage to a creature, uh, if it dies this turn, you actually get to flip it into uh, Kenzu the Hard Hearted. Uh, which is a 3-4 with Double Strike and Bushido 2. So instead of the one that we've seen already, it gets that plus 2, plus 2 anytime it's blocked or becomes blocked, which is a very, very powerful creature indeed. Uh, as a 1-drop, I feel like this is a really, really great card. Um, just because at the very worst, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. It can't really get worse than that. And then if you get the upside of dealing some damage to something, uh, which is going to be really tricky to do if, if, if you ask me, uh, then you can flip this. I feel like because it's going to be so difficult to do, I'm not as in for this card as I am uh, the, the Samurai of the Pale Curtain here. That might be a little incorrect of an assessment, but I feel like it's going to be very difficult to kill something or to actually deal damage without killing this. So for that reason, I don't think this is as high as a pick uh, unless you can somehow very, very easily flip it, and I'm just not aware of how. Uh, oh, okay. 
So here's our rare, uh, in name death aspect. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four for 4 and 2 black. When it comes into play, you can search your library for any number of spirit cards and put them into your graveyard. If you do, shuffle your library. Obviously, the idea here is to use that soul shift mechanic to bring it back. This does not have soul shift, but obviously your other spirits are supposed to. I don't like this. This is a very build around kind of card, and I don't like build arounds so much in limited because you're really either all in or you're just not going to end up with a good deck. So uh, it's a really, really difficult thing. Sometimes you can get away with it for sure, but I don't think this is worth it. It's still just a 4-4 four, four for 6 at the end of the day. That's pretty bad. Uh, so I don't actually think that's the, at the pick at all. Um, we did get a foil. Brothers Yamazaki, Yamazaki I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 2-1 for 2 and a uh, red legendary creature. Pretty cool. Uh, Bushido 1, same thing we've seen before. If there are exactly two permanents named, named excuse me, Brothers Yamaziki in play, the legend rule does not apply to them. And then each other creature named Brother Yamazaki gets plus two, plus two, and has haste. So the deal with this card is obviously you want multiples of them. It isn't uncommon, so you're not guaranteed to get multiples of them. They're really not good if you only have one, in my opinion. It's not terrible, but it's really not great. Uh, however, if you can get multiples of them, I think it's good. I don't necessarily think it's safe to pick this super early because they're, in this case, I think we have a better option. But I could see maybe if you're going to go into this strategy, you do probably want to take it early just so you've got it. So honestly, though, I think for me, it's Samurai of the Pale Curtain. Uh, it's a pretty solid two drop, in my opinion. And with that random soul shift upside, uh, just so, so much hate against that soul shift deck, which is great. So in my opinion, that's what the pick is. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.